All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our March webinar for College Golf. Uh, we have the pleasure of speaking with invited guest Brandon Miller of Kaiser University tonight. Thanks for coming on, Brandon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to talk with you and love talking about college golf. So looking forward to it. Absolutely. We're excited and uh, I'm glad you are as well. Uh, now, just a quick introduction to Coach Miller here. Um, Brandon coaches both the men's and women's teams at Kaiser University, formerly Northwood University. Um, and what city is that in, Brandon? West Palm Beach. West Palm Beach, South Florida, for all of you that, that don't know out there. Uh, Brandon, was, Brandon was named the NAIA Coach of the Year last year. Uh, his women's side won the NAIA Championship. Uh, so congratulations on that. I know that's a huge honor. Thanks very much. Yeah, girls did great. Very proud of them. And uh, it sounds like they're doing great as well this year. Yeah, they've been playing well. Good stuff. Um, you know, before Kaiser, I know uh, you've been there since 2010. Mm -hmm. um, before Kaiser, though, you were at UNC Pembroke as a coach for two years. Right. And played yourself collegiately um, at Florida Tech. Yep. So, ladies and gents, we got you were in the hands of a special individual tonight. Uh, would love for you to you know learn as much as you can, and, and if anything, I would recommend taking home one or two pieces of information from this webinar uh, and using them you know in your daily activities and your daily struggles. So, hopefully, we uh, some of this information we give you can help. All right, Brandon. Without further ado. Um, you know, I know we've discussed multiple topics over the last couple of weeks. Um, we got a lot to talk about, but we're going to try to keep it short and sweet here to about 30 minutes. Um, I really just want to get into what is the NAIA, uh, you know, compare it a little bit to the NCAA as, as best we can, um, and, and just give junior golfers and families out there and anyone, you know, looking to, um, you know, to play college golf some sort of idea of what the NAI is like? Yeah, I mean, it's a question I get asked a lot. What's the NAI? I mean, everybody's heard of it, but not many people know a whole lot about it. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's, it's a school like any NCAA school. It just has a different governing body in terms of right. athletics. Um, the NAI is totally separate from the NCAA. The NAI has their, we have our own national championships um, for all sports and we have our own conferences, just like the NCAA does as well. We have our own national office. The NAI national office is in Kansas City, Missouri. And they have a whole staff that works there and handles all the NAI business and all the NAI national championships and legislation. And that's exactly the way the NCAA does. And they're just uh, two separate college athletic governing bodies that have different rules and different schools under their umbrellas. So. Our school is an NAI school, and there's not sure how many there are. I know in golf, that I know there's over probably over 200 men's NAI golf programs, and women's golf, I mean, probably close to 200, maybe 150 to 200 range. And there are great opportunities in the NAI, just so, as there are in the NCAA as well, to play golf. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the perception that um, we're going to try to debunk here tonight is that. There are no scholarship opportunities in the NAI, or there's not good golf being played at the NAI level. Uh, that is hardly the case. And, um, you know, it's cool that we, we're having you on tonight, that we can really get the perspective of someone that sees that firsthand, um, not only on the men's side, but the women's side as well. Um, mm -hmm. So, Coach, tell us, um, maybe my first question tonight would be, um, we, Obviously, the perception of D1 golf, D2, D3 is all different. Um, but something unique to not only the NAI, there, there are other divisions that have this occurrence, but you have to coach both the men's and women's programs. Right. That's a tough duty. Um, yeah, it is. But um, at the same time, I get to be at twice the amount of golf tournaments and have – men and women on the team who are all great people and I just have double the amount of somebody who coaches one team so I mean, it's it's good the way I look at it I mean with more uh great people that I see on a daily basis playing golf and improving as golfer student and people and that's what it's all about and I'm lucky I get to 
and we have a tournament every week, men's week, men's tournament, women's tournament. And uh, that's what I love doing, going to golf tournaments and just have a blast doing it. Certainly lucky to be doing it at West Palm Beach too. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll talk a little bit about facilities because it sounds like you guys got a pretty cool spot down there in a minute. Yeah. Um, so, you, I mean, you are a full-time coach. I mean, you're traveling with both squads. Um, you know, and, and not, to, not to say you're not providing value, your women's team just won the national championship. Mm-hmm. So you must be doing something right. Um, and your men's team's not half bad either. Yeah, yeah our men are one, number one on golf set right now too, and our women Very cool. are also. Um, but yeah, I mean, leading the pack in both categories. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we have good players on our team. It's not that I, I'm doing anything special here. That I hit zero golf shots this year. It's all, <laughs> <laughs> all them for sure. He's humble, ladies and gentlemen. He's very humble. <laughs> um, okay, cool, Brandon. I mean, this is we're off to a running start here. Um, you know, if. You know, so I'll kind of look at it from my perspective and you can tell me your thoughts. Uh, I have various junior golfers and families that come to me on a daily basis, on a weekly basis. Um, you can kind of hear the, the aggravation of my voice there. And everyone tells me, I want to play college golf. Okay. And then they always finish the sentence with, at a D1 level or in Division One. Right. Now... You know, us knowing the whole landscape, you, you know, you played uh, at Florida Tech, you know, you went to UNC Pembroke, then Kaiser, you know, you've been at different levels. So you've seen and experienced that. Yeah. Where, where do you think they could go wrong in that thinking there, in that statement? Well, I think there's, um, I mean, if you're playing at the top tier of division one, maybe the top 50 ranked division one programs in the PAC 12, the big 10, um, the SEC, those major, um, like giant conferences. And yeah, I mean, it's probably a higher level of play than every other conference at every level. But at the same time, if you're not, I mean, consistently shooting under par as a junior golfer, you're, I mean, you're probably not good enough to play in those programs. A lot of those guys are, I mean, pretty close to PJ tour ready. There's so many young guys on tour who are straight out of the, those major schools like LSU and Georgia and, um, that are already winning tournaments on tour. So, I mean, Outside of that, there's so many opportunities to play college golf at, I mean, smaller Division ones, Division twos, Division threes, and NAIs. And there's, I mean, there's not much different. The, the level of play in the NAI is comparable to the middle of Division one or the top of Division two. Yeah, if, if you don't mind, I'm going to be the numbers guy here. Um, at, so other than the D1 level, just on the men's side, there are 800 – and I mean to emphasize that there are 800 out of roughly, you know, there's 300 teams in D1 or so. Yeah. 800 other opportunities that offer men's golf. And that's just on the men's side. So realizing that, you know, it's almost like, you know, if you're thinking about it from a astronomical standpoint, we're on earth here. There's humans here and there's some crazy life out there. It's, it's almost how I, I tell it to my guys. It's like D1 is not the only thing going on here. There's yeah, no. great opportunities uh, wherever you look, left and right. Right. I mean, it's more about, I mean, it's more about finding the school that's the right fit for you, not the division. I mean, there's so many – I mean, there's great opportunities and great schools at, at every level. I mean, if, it, if the right school for you is a Division One school, you should go there. But if it's not, I mean, you shouldn't force the issue to play division one golf because at the end of the day what's the difference we're all playing nice golf courses traveling nice places and i mean there's really no difference apart from what people's perceptions are yeah well you have it right there ladies and gentlemen there's you know at the most basic level there is no difference um we're going to kind of break that down here in just a minute uh Brandon, I know we spoke a little bit about, you know, NCAA versus NAIA. Uh, we're going to keep going into that. But, you know, if a junior golfer is at that point to where he's thinking about making a decision or ready to make that decision to play college golf, mm-hmm. um, you know, his sitting down, he's sitting down with his support team, his parents, his swing coach, uh, his, you know, everyone that's influenced him 
throughout the recruiting process. Um, and he's sitting there, you know, my thought is at very least they're considering the question of what should be important to me or what's important in this process. Um, you know, the, the things I have written down here are a college degree. That's obvious. You yeah. want to get out with a great education. Of course. Uh, there's great, great institutions at every level. No doubt about it. Experience. Um, that could mean a lot of things. Playing experience, uh, you know, personal experience, and, you know, experience as a student athlete. I think those are all pretty important there. You know, the memories you make are very important. You know, the adventures you go on with your team, the inside jokes you have with your guys. Yeah. I mean, I know personally, I can share a little story about myself here that the, the memories that I took back with me to Florida here from James Madison and the four years I spent up there, you know, my team and I were so close knit. We were so family like that. It was, it was hard to leave, you know, not embarrassingly. I, I shed tears when I think about that or, or going back to that time when I had to leave James Madison and I, you know, out of the blue, nowhere near that environment that I was once in. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't easy. So those are the, I think those are the intangibles that, um, you, you know, you may not be able to pinpoint when you're a junior golfer, but, um, you know, some sort of foundation is to be set there and, and understanding what you want out of your college experience. And then, you know, getting that degree and maybe paving your pathway to a job or a future in professional golf, best case scenario. Um, in, in your point of view, I know I covered a lot there, but in your point of view, if they're sitting down at that dinner table and asking themselves, what's important, what's really important in college golf, what, what's your take on that? What do you think they should be talking about? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a tough question to answer. I mean, what's, I mean, it's, I'm not, it's probably hard for a lot of 17 year olds to know what's important to them. Right. I don't think I knew when I was 17. I mean, probably didn't even know until after college. I mean, you don't really realize it until it's gone, what was important to you. Um, but, I mean, so the, the relationships you make with your teammates and, I mean, not only your teammates, but other students in your school. I mean, especially other athletes. I think a lot of schools, the athletes kind of gravitate towards each other because, I mean, they're all have a relatable experience being a student athlete. I mean, it takes a lot of time. It's a major commitment. And, yep. And, uh we just have a lot in common in that regard. So, I mean, you'll make just relationships that last a lifetime. I know, I think most people will say that the friends they make in college are the friends they consider their best friends for the rest of their life, not necessarily their friends from high school or their friends after college, just your friends in college who are your best friends. I know that's certainly true for me and it might be true. Here. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the relationships you make with your, your teammates and your coaches and your teachers and, I mean, I think that's what's important. That's the whole college experience. Yeah, totally agree with you there. And that's, it may sound general. I mean, it's awesome explanation. But it's hard to put those little things into words. I, I find myself struggling to do that. But, you know, and, and like you said, you don't really realize, you know, what you're getting into until it's over kind of thing. Right, yeah. But I think that's also the cool part about it. Yeah, and it, it goes by quick. I mean, yeah. I mean, I a few, a lot of seniors on my team this year, and um, I mean, I can't believe they're graduating already. I mean, it feels like yesterday when we're going through the recruiting process with them. Yeah. And before you know it, four years later, and I don't know, forty some tournaments later, they're they're graduating. Well, that has to be pretty cool for you. I just kind of thought of this here. You know, you've been at Kaiser for six years, so it's probably just that first group of guys that you recruited personally right yeah this is my first uh the guys that are seniors guys and girls that are seniors now that's my first like full year of recruiting that i had done yeah they'll be graduating in may and um yeah it'll be uh it'll be cool to see them all walk at graduation and we got our conference championship like the two days before graduation so it'll be a an emotional week i'm sure for all the a lot going on yeah well, Coach, it certainly sounds like you're doing all right. Yeah. Done yeah. good things with the program. 
Yeah, thanks. I'm happy to have you on. Um, well, cool. I mean, there's, there's so many things we could talk about here. I mean, we could be here for another three days, you know, comparing the NAI with the NCAA. Yeah. Um, but I just want to kind of touch on it from a basic level. You know, if, if you were to go and say, this is what D1 golf offers you, and this is what NAI golf offers you, would the difference be in re recruiting? Would it be in the typical day-to-day -day activities? Would it be in tournaments and competition? Where would it, where would that come? So, yeah, I mean, just a quick summary of like some NAI rules that are different than NCAA rules in terms of golf. Um, yeah, recruiting is definitely different. NCAA has a good amount of restrictions. I mean, I'm not too familiar with them. I've been out of coaching in NCAA for over five years now, but in the NAI, um, yeah, there's not really any recruiting restrictions. So uh, theoretically I can recruit a 12 year old tomorrow. I mean, sure. I wouldn't, but I mean, you could, <laughs> um, also, I mean, there's no restrictions in talking to an NAI coach at junior golf tournament, um, calling, texting, emailing, Facebook messaging. Yeah. There's no restrictions at all with an NAI coach in, in any sport. That right there is a good message for juniors, I think, because, yeah. you know, a lot of them don't know the rules and regulations. They don't know that the coach can't respond and stuff. But at your level, you know, it's cool because you could go up and introduce yourself. You know, if you're a junior yeah. golfer, you can introduce yourself at any time, and the coach and you can have a full conversation, whereas right. that's not the case with other schools. Yeah, a lot of people don't know that. and I mean, sometimes I'll be at a junior tournament, and I'll talk to a recruiter parent, and I mean, they kind of feel like that, that we're breaking the rules. I'm like, and after sure, I'm like, no, like we're totally. <laughs> Trust me, I wouldn't be doing it <laughs> if that was the case. Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people just aren't, aren't informed about that. Right. And then uh, yeah, in terms of practice in the NAI, so what we have is the 24-week rule, and that, uh, that covers not just golf, every sport in the NAI. We're allowed 24 weeks of practice and competition outside of that 24 weeks uh we can't structure any golf related activity we can do workouts we can do team meetings um anything like that just can't do anything that involves golf golf club sure uh, interesting yeah so usually our, our 24 weeks is split up to maybe nine or ten weeks in the fall semester and we use the rest of the weeks in the spring maybe 14 15 weeks in the spring um so inside those 24 weeks we're doing practice qualifying in tournaments outside of those 24 weeks um I, I can't be at the golf course with the team but they're, i mean they're still obviously can practice on their own um as far as tournaments in the nai we're allowed 14 competitions in the regular season that doesn't include postseason and postseason is which would be our conference championship and national championship um so total you could play 14 regular seasons, conference, and nationals. So 16 total tournaments, which I think is a lot more than most NCAA programs. Um, I know, yeah, NCAA, I, mean, I know they have their dates of competition rule. I don't, I'm not too familiar with it exactly, but yeah. Um, yeah, the NAI, you could. I think, I think it's 26 per year, 26 competitive days per year, which equates to, you know, I mean, coach, tell me if I'm wrong, but it sounds pretty similar. These yeah. rules are, are very, very yeah, it's, it's all similar. It's just different slightly. Um, but, I mean, in terms of golf, there's – I mean, we play in tournaments with a lot of NCAA teams, Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three. I mean, junior college schools. I mean, we, we play them all. I mean, anybody who's in Florida, we've probably played them. I mean, even out of Florida, when we travel, we'll play anybody. I mean, yeah. we – time we strictly play NAI schools would be in our postseason and uh yeah, I mean the NAI postseason is tough I mean, same as NCAA you got to shoot well under par to compete to win a tournament and I mean, the, there's good players for sure and that's I think that's the um you know I'm not speaking for your players or speaking for anybody in the NAI because I've never played in there in it but if you have that opportunity to play in the postseason to actually go out and compete for a national title yeah. for gosh sakes. I mean, how cool is that? Because, you know, if you're weighing your options athletically, athletic only between, you know, a 
top level D1 program that you probably won't see the playing field, probably won't qualify for all the events, if any, versus a D2, D3, or NAIA program where you should get more experience. You know, there's good, there's good teams. I mean, you still got to play. Yeah. But really realizing in high school, your level and, and then being smart as to making that best fit decision, saying, okay, I'm going to go here because I need the opportunity to play. I want that experience. That's something that I'm looking forward to, competing for a national championship. Yeah. And it's, I mean, that's how you get better at golf, just by competing in those pressure situations. Yep. Uh, more often you can put yourself in that position, the better off you'll be for it going forward as a, as a golfer, for sure. Sure. I think that's why you see, I mean, you see that at the pro level every day. Yeah. So many of these guys breaking out and it truly is that breakout moment where comparatively in college golf, it could be a NCAA title or NAIA title where, where it defines you as a player for that moment, but you, you grow and you develop because of that. I think that's so cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, Coach, I got, I got one more question before we wrap up here. Okay. Maybe, maybe two, actually. Here, here's the first. Your guys, that come, your, your guys that come to you or, or the, your guys that you recruit, that you recruit, what, yeah. what, um, you know, what are they coming to you with? What are, um, not so much how are they different than other players? because I don't think there's a way to generalize, you know, NAIA players versus NCAA players. But what are, what are your guys yeah. looking for out of that experience that may be different than a NCAA school? Um, yeah, I mean, that's tough to answer. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I think I recruit a lot of players that are looking at NCAA schools as well. And uh, I mean, what I just try to express is that I mean, you just got to pick the right school and not the right division. And uh, right. and our school has a lot to offer in terms of location and facilities, especially for golf. So, um, yeah, I mean, what, what do my players look for? I think just the opportunity to compete and to get better and at the same time get a good education and become a more well-rounded person. I think that's, that's what they're looking for. At least that's what I hope they are. Sure. I love, I love what you said last there is become a well-rounded person because it, in my perspective, those moments, those NCA or the NAI championships, those, those pressure situations and just having the ability to compete, those are the situations that'll mold you and form you and make you a better person over the long run. Yeah. Would you agree sure. with that? I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it does. I mean, the more experiences like that that you have, the better. I mean, it's, it's something – like I, the girls on our team that won the national championship last year, like every job interview they have for the rest of their life, that's like a sure. key topic in a job interview. That's um, so cool. So, I mean, it, it, it's something they take with them the rest of their life. And, I mean, they have video clips of interviews with ESPN and the local news, and that's clips they can – send up potential employers. And I mean, if, if I'm a, an employer looking to hire somebody for any, I mean, any job and I see, Oh, oh wow. This person was on ESPN and local NBC news. And, and they're, I mean, they were a great student. They had great success. I mean, that's, I think, uh, an attractive thing when it's a competitive job environment out there, it's competitive. And if you want to play professional golf or whatever you want to do, there's a lot of people who want to do exactly what you want to do. So you got to, have something that makes you stand out. And I think competing for a national championship certainly does in, in many aspects for sure. I think what you just said there is so attractive because what that, what that really says is, you know, you, that embodies, I think what you just said, you know, getting that opportunity and having those other things come of that embodies like the message of student athletics or playing sports in college. That, that's all you're right. really looking for. You know, if, yes, there's other things. There's team camaraderie and, and going to class, and there's, there's tons of other tangible things. But 
Um, I think that in itself is something that every college golfer or prospective college golfer could be looking for. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, they call you a student athlete. The student comes first for a reason because it's, that's right. It's what you're there for. Uh, I mean, I think hopefully not everybody loses sight of that, but sure. Um, yeah, the, the education that you get not only in class, but just by being around new people and, being in an environment away from home, which is well, most people go to college, it's their first time away from home for an extended period. And that experience is what uh, prepares you for life. Absolutely. All right, coach, I want to kind of transition and segue here into, um, I, I know we had some cool screens and some cool shots that we can show the viewers uh, watching this webinar tonight. Um, I'll, I'll go just go ahead and pull them up here. So we have two different events. Coach, I'll let you kind of explain it as we go here. But this is okay. This is a birdie fire um, tournament. You guys just played in today, actually. Yeah, this was our home tournament today at Fountains Country Club on the North Course, March 13th and 14th, 2016. Yep, the men's team, obviously. Uh, yeah, this is our men's team. Um, par 71 golf course. Um, yeah, I mean, the scores were pretty good. Johnson Wales, a really strong team. They're, uh, I mean, perennially top 10 NEI golf program. Yep, absolutely. Um, so, I mean, they played really well. Shoot 200 par. Golf course is not easy. They have pre qualifying for the Honda Classic, the PJ Tour event. They oh, said wow. a few weeks ago. Some pretty uh, prevalent names up here. You know, I've seen. And maybe not all the viewers have seen these names, but these are top, you know, top programs uh, in the NAI. Yeah. So, Especially yeah, Johnson, Wales, Kaiser, Southeastern, Dalton State, Marion, Thomas, they're all ranked. Warner's receiving votes in the rankings. So, right there, the top eight um, ranked NAI programs. Sure. Now, kind of just take a snapshot, if you would, viewers out there in your mind. You know, Johnson and Wales shot two under par for the tournament and Kaiser shot 15 over in your mind here. And we're going to transition over to a division one tournament, if I believe. Yep. So that yeah. was. This is Florida Atlantic down in Boca Raton. They also yeah. share Fountains Country Club as a home course of theirs. Um, they play the theirs. Same in golf course. Yep. March, same exact golf course, par same 71. Month, just last year. Yeah, and they have their – I mean, they'll be hosting this event again in about two weeks, so we can check out the scores in two weeks. But sure. I think it's just interesting to see um, what all these big Division One programs shoot. I mean, these are all good programs as well. I mean, there's plenty of good golfers in this field too. Sure. Um, it looks like five under one individually. Yeah, eight under one individually at our event today. Wow. So right there, and, and that's just a quick look, but right there, I mean, I think that provides pretty good perspective of, you know, comparing the, the, the two divisions and, and how it, in everyone's mind, there may be a big disconnect, but in reality, same golf course, different dates, same golf course though. Yep. Same golf course. We ate the same food in the clubhouse for, that's right. for lunch and dinner. So that's right. Uh, really the exact same tournament. Just, uh, different golf bags on the driving range really yeah that's so cool yeah well coach i wanted to thank you on uh, for coming on here tonight um certainly a pleasure to speak with you and, and finally get to meet you face to face yeah pleasure talking to you uh, nice yeah. to meet you as well yeah absolutely and if i may ask you know one final question sure if, if you were to give juniors her parents or anyone looking to play college golf you know one piece of advice uh, what what might that be in in the world of a um, NAIA coach, especially a high level one like yourself? Um, advice, you know, just tell you to um, do what's best for you, and not do what's best for uh, what you think is best for you with the people around you. And deep in your heart, you know it's best for you, and you just have to to do that. And, 
the end of the day, all you can do is your best and especially on the golf course, just do your best and whatever happens, happens. And as soon as you can learn to accept that, the better you'll be at golf. And I think in every aspect of life too. So great. Message. That one, one sentence of advice would just be do what's best for you. And it, it's hard. It's hard to figure that out. That's not an easy question to, to figure out for a 17 year old, but sure. Um, yeah, it's something you, you got to figure out. So you can, if, I mean, if you have good people around you like yourself and I know open junior golfers is a, a great thing because not everybody is, is informed and it's all about making an informed decision. And that's, uh, all you can do. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, uh, coach Brandon Miller from Kaiser university. Thanks so much for coming on coach. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Absolutely. Uh, we'll have to do it again. Yeah, for sure. That concludes our March webinar for Four College Golf. Hope you guys enjoyed it, took some snippets of advice, and good luck on the recruiting trail.